Yep, welcome to Cars and Zebras 2020. Before I start the video, you guys, make sure you vote in the upper right corner for which car you think is going to win this race. Okay, let's hit it. This is a 1970 Buick GSX. And come on, you guys, I think we can all admit that this is one of the most iconic American muscle cars of all time. I mean, I even had a poster of this thing hanging up in my room when I was a kid. It sat right next to Pam Anderson from Barb Wire. And I would say that the GSX has even aged better than Pam Anderson and it definitely has less hepatitis. And as great as the GSX might be, it wasn't very cheap. The base price of a GS 455 in 1970 was $3,392. That GSX package, that's another $1,195. Bringing the absolute cheapest total without any other options to $4,000. $587, adjusting for inflation, that's $30,407 today. Of course, all of these Buicks, though, came with quite a few extra options, so you are never going to find one that cheap. And you're probably thinking, well, Cars and Zebras, what do I get for that extra $1,200 with the GSX package? Well, you got a few things. Heavy-duty cooling, power front disc brakes, heavy-duty front and rear shocks, the absolutely awesome hood tack, you also got the 15 by 7 Buick Rally wheels, and of course the signature GSX Stripe Kit on top of Saturn Yellow or Apollo White. And which color do you guys like more? Leave a comment. The base engine for the GSX was the 455. It put out 350 horsepower at 4,600 RPM with a compression ratio of 10 to 1. But a smart move was just to upgrade to the Stage 1 package. It was only another 200 bucks, and with it you got a more aggressive camshaft, you got a rejetted carburetor, and the compression ratio was also increased to 10 and a half to 1. And with those changes, Buick rated the Stage 1 engine at a whopping 10 horsepower more than the base 455? Aww. I think Buick was fudging the numbers a little bit. <laughs> hey guys, why don't you get in a little closer? I want I want to tell you all a joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Torque. Torque who? 510 pound feet! When it came to transmissions, the close ratio of four speed was standard, but you could also get a three speed automatic, that being the tried and true turbo 400 and that just happens to be what this car features and how about that interior you guys mm, that is gorgeous that is pure buick right there fast with class oh my god i think i'm in love with a buick Hey girl, I just wanted to say one thing. That I want to spread Kara Nuba wax all over your thick quarter panels. And then I'm gonna fill you up with 110 octane. Okay, oh girl, talking about Buick. 342 gears were standard on the 1970 Buick GSX, with the Stage 1 package getting 364 gears, and that just happens to be what this car is housing in that fine rear end. As you would expect, the 1970 GSX isn't the lightest car on the road. With driver, this car is coming in at 3,998 pounds, so it's definitely a little thick. I'm sure it's no surprise for you guys, but the production for the GSX in 1970 was very limited. They only made 678 of these cars, with 491 in Saturn Yellow and 187 in Apollo White. I'm sure the price was a big limiting factor for buyers, but Buick also had somewhat boring advertising around that time. These two automobile engines look pretty much the same, but they certainly don't act the same. The one on the right is standard in this new Buick. It's designed to run on low lead or no lead gasoline. Okay, okay, regardless of how bad this commercial is, it is still 10 times better than any commercial Buick is putting out right now. Motor Trend was able to get a hold of one of these cars in 1970, and they got a 0 to 60 time of 5.8 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.38 seconds 
at 105.5 miles per hour. That's not too shabby. I'm drenched. Feed me nachos and I'm yours. That's not my car, you dumb One interesting knowledge nugget about the 1970 GSX was that the spoiler was so heavy, Buick had to install a thicker torsion spring to hold the trunk open. The standard spring, it just couldn't do it. That spoiler was just too voluptuous. But enough talk about this 1970 Buick GSX. Let's check out its opponent. This is a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle Supersport 396. And I didn't have a poster of this car on my wall growing up, but it did make its way into a few of my dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you! And these cars are definitely underappreciated because in 1970, the 454 was the hot, sexy thing on the market that everybody wanted. Oh my god, I'm in love with a Chevelle. Hey girl, I just wanted to let you know that I'm over that GSX. And I want to lather you up with a pH balanced car shampoo. And then I'm going to hose you down to a spot free finish. And I'm not sure why these 396s don't get a little bit more recognition. I mean, we're talking about 350 horsepower at 5200 RPM, 415 pound feet of torque at 3400 RPM all with a compression ratio of 10 and a quarter to one. Interestingly, this engine is not 396 cubic inches. It's actually 402 cubic inches. Chevrolet made that change in 1970, but for some reason they left the old name. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe it was all head games. Just like the Buick, you could get a three-speed automatic, the Turbo 400, but this car features the four-speed manual. And come on, you guys, do I even have to say it? That green interior is absolutely spectacular. I love green interiors on these old muscle cars. I think it looks so awesome, and it fits so well. I really think they should bring it back. Standard rear gearing on the 1970 Chevelle Supersport 396 was a 331, but this car has optional 410 gears. Interestingly, the Supersport package did not include posit traction. If you wanted it, that was going to be another $42.15. Which in a car like this was money well spent because that open differential, eh, not so good on the drag strip. But it is really good at one tire burnouts. <laughs> By 1970, the Chevelle was starting to get a little bit chunky. Gone were the days of the lightweight Chevelles of the mid-1960s, and this car, with driver, is coming in at 3,920 pounds, which, if you're keeping track, is only an 80-pound advantage over the Buick. Yaku, gotcha. Kabunyuni. The pricing of the 1970 Chevelle was absolutely fantastic. The base Malibu started at $2,809. The Super Sport package would add another $445.55. The four-speed manual transmission, that's another $184.80. And then, of course, Posit Traction was another $42.15, giving you a grand total at cheapest of $3,000. $481.50. Adjusting for inflation, that'd be just over $23,000 today, but keep in mind that doesn't include any options that this car has, like that ultra cool cowl induction hood. If you're in the market for a Super Sport 396 Chevelle, well, you are in luck. Chevrolet made over 51,000 of these cars in 1970. I just hope you have a little cash saved up because these cars are very collectible right now. And they aren't that cheap. I did find one interesting option for the 1970 Chevelle, and that was the Electro Tip Windshield Wiper. They discussed it in this Monte Carlo ad, but it was also available in the Chevelle. The Electro Tip Windshield Wiper was a $19 option, but only 331 Chevelles were equipped in 1970. At the end of the turn signal stalk was a button, and if you push that button, it would simultaneously activate your windshield washer sprayers and your windshield wipers through four cycles, thus cleaning your windshield 
with the simplicity of a single button. What a time to live in. But enough talk about these two cars, let's see what they can do on the drag strip. Next, two cars, 97 GM, UHGSX, right, 678 that year. Most of them in stage one, I think, number 200. Uh, this is owned by Roberta Vasco, who's been here as long as I have, uh, at least 1996. Again, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future Drag Race videos. And of course, I'll see you at the next one.